Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at an interesting concept in infinity. I want you to consider the open interval 0, 1. So this set contains all the real numbers from 0 to 1. What is the size of this interval? If you compare it to the closed set 0, 1, how would they compare? Which one's bigger? The closed set 0, 1 is basically this set plus 0 and 1. So this set does not include 0 and 1, but this one does. So clearly, obviously, right, this one should be bigger. But that's not really the case, which is what makes this super interesting. And we will be proving that both these sets are identical in size in this video. To prove that these two sets have the same cardinality, we will show that there exists a bijection between them. A function f that maps from a to b is said to be bijective if it's both injective and surjective. To help us better understand this proof, let's quickly define what this means. A function f is injective if no two elements in a map to the same element in b. So suppose some element x1 maps to y1 in b. Then x2, if x2 maps to y1 in b, then this, is not, this function is not injective. In words, we write this as f of x. If f of x equals f of y, then x must be y. Now let's define what a surjection is. f is a surjection if every element in b is hit by f. So if I have these elements in B, there is some value which hits it. So there's a mapping for each value that maps to y. And in words, we write this as for all y in B, there exists some x in A such that f of x equals y. To better understand this, I think it might be a good idea to go over an example of a bijection. Consider two sets. Suppose you have 1, 2, 3 in the one set, and 4, 5, 6 in the second set. We're going to call this set A, and we're going to call this set B. Now, define a function f that maps from A to B, as we see here, as f of x equals x plus 3. Now you'll see that 1 maps to 4, 2 maps to 5, and 3 maps to 6, which satisfies both of these rules. However, if I get rid of this 6 here, then what, one of these elements from here would be map, getting mapped from two of the same, so it would have two arrows pointing to it, like this, which violates injectivity. If I had 4, 5, 6, and 7 here, and 3 would map here, 7 would not have anything mapping to it, which violates this rule. So that this is why this is not a bijection, but this is. And if two sets, if there's a, if some function is a bijection, then that means that the, those two sets have the same size. Now, to prove that these two have the same cardinality, let's define a bijection from the closed interval 0, 1 to the open interval 0, 1. Intuitively, you want to, since this has two extra elements, 0, 1, we try to make space for 0, 1 and try to push it one step forward. You'll see what I mean when I explain this. So we're going to define two sequences, A and B. Define A, so we're going to add a 0 here in A and the 1 in B. And define A as 0, comma, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, and so on. Note that since we know that there's an infinite number of natural numbers, there's an infinite number of elements in this set. So there's always something after each element. And then define B as 1, 2 thirds, 3 fourths, 4 fifths, 5 sixths, and so on. Again, the same, the same intuition. There's an infinite number of natural numbers, so this sequence also goes on to infinity. Now, I'm going to define another set, S, as the set of numbers in 
the quotient of a zero one, excluding a union b. So it's all the numbers that we have in hand while defining these sequences. For example, one over root two. You're never going to find it in either a or b because this is an irrational number, and obviously all numbers here are irrational because they can be shown as uh, in the form p over q. Now, to define a bijection, this is the last step in our proof. f of x, which maps a to b, which maps this to this, to define it to give x if x belongs to the set s. So if we catch suppose 1 over root 2, then f will simply return 1 over root 2. Then if, if we catch one of these numbers here, suppose we get 1 half, then we're going to go to the next place in 1 half, which is 1 third. So we write that as a n plus 1 if x equals a n. And similarly with b, b n plus 1 if x equals b n. And this basically, so if I, if I have a 0 here, then f of x will return 1 half. If I have 1 half, it will return 1 third. And hence, you can create a bijection which maps 0, 1 close to 0, 1 over. Let's go over why this is a bijection. Remember that to be a bijection, it needs to be both injective and surjective. The function is surjective because everything is a is mapped except a naught. So one half, one third, one fourth is mapped, has something that maps to it. Two third, three fourth, four fifth, five sixth, everything, it has some element that maps to it. And everything in S has itself that is mapped to it. So everything in zero one is hit because obviously nothing maps to 0 and 1. This function is injective because every element in A is mapped to another unique element in A. So 0 is mapped to 1 half, 1 half is mapped to 1 third. Similarly, every element in B is mapped to another element in B. So 1 is mapped to 2 thirds, 2 thirds is mapped to 3 fourths, and every element in S is mapped to another element in S. In this case, it's just the element itself. So we see that since A, B, and S are disjoint, they all have a unique mapping. So hence, um, the function is also injective. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. Stay tuned for more, more cool math videos coming up in the next few weeks. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.